Thanks for joining us. Welcome to the Catholic View for Women, the show with news and views from a truly Catholic perspective. I'm Teresa Tamio, along with my co-host, Astra Bennett Gutierrez from Hispanics for Life and Janet Morana from Priests for Life, Silent Lamore, and also you're very familiar with her, of course, on EWTM Radio and as a co-host of Defending Life right here at EWTN Television. And the topic for this episode is certainly an interesting and challenging one. We've entitled it, Gray is the Devil's favorite color. And we've done that for a few reasons. First of all, this is a great quote from philosopher, doctor, professor, author, and convert, Dr. Peter Kraft. And he said this really about moral relativism and referring to, of course, uh, Pope Benedict XVI often talking about this dictatorship of moral relativism where everything is gray, nothing is black and white, it's okay to do this, that, or the other thing. Yes. But from a women's perspective, we're also tying it in with this phenomenon really that's happening right now with a lot of women and even many Catholic women we've found are getting into pornography, unfortunately, more and more. And specifically, and Astrid, I know we're going to talk about the article yes. I wrote, Specifically, the book, for example, of Fifty Shades of Grey, which is being turned into a movie and which has sold, unfortunately, millions and millions of copies. And as I said, many Catholic and Protestant women are reading this now, which is a real oh, shame. And I was surprised to even hear about it. Right. I mean, I, I didn't know the book was so... Asher was going to say to me, well, Janet, it's in the supermarket. It's, it's in the airport. Right, it's right, everywhere. It's right. all over mm -hmm. there. And I wasn't even aware of it. But when you told me, I was like, oh, my goodness. And like you're saying, just average women who, you know, are believe in the Lord and everything else, are just picking this up and mm -hmm. reading it. And then it's it's cut, it's a temptation that's taking them down a wrong curve, right. down and, wrong road. And it's it's mainstreaming right. pornography, and pornography exactly. is a sin. Absolutely. But but don't you think it's because women think that unless they're sitting down and watching something that this is okay? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Why do you think it's catching on so much? Well, we know that uh, pornography is an epidemic, so we know it's everywhere. I mean, my goodness, young people are assaulted with the, now with uh, technology, with mm -hmm. texting, with... Uh, the internet, it's so readily available. You cannot even drive down the, the road without being offended by s some image, um, which is really, really sad. And we know how, how terrible it is for marriage. But um, what's striking about the situation with this particular novel, Fifty Shades of Grey, is that we know pornography is out there, and, um, but seeing women, you know, the everyday mom, housewife, you know, just uh, Catholic, um, reading it. So I think what's happening is they might think that it's not really pornography. You know, mm -hmm. as a matter of fact, in your article, you say that some people uh, call it mommy porn, right, you know? Right, so I right. think it's important to clarify exactly what <laughs> pornography is because people think because it's in a book, because it's written, it's not visual, visual that it right. isn't pornography. But the Catechism of the Catholic Church um, in section 2354 defines pornography as such. Pornography consists in removing real or simulated sexual acts from the intimacy of the partners in order to display them deliberately to third parties. It offends against chastity because it perverts the conjugal act, the intimate giving of spouses to each other. It does grave injury to the dignity of its participants, actors, vendors, and the public, since each one becomes an object of base pleasure and illicit profit for others. It immerses all who are involved in the illusion of a fantasy world. It is a grave offense, and civil authorities should prevent the production and distribution of pornographic mm -hmm. material. Mm -hmm. It is that damaging. Right. It is that horrible. And we know the, the effect of pornography on marriage, how devastating it is, how many couples struggle with it, right. and, and also psychologically and, and, um, and physically what it does to the brain of the people that watch it. It's the effect of hard drugs. It's right. been, it's been right. demonstrated by studies. So um, spiritually, it is absolutely, it's, it's a mortal sin, but it's also extremely, um, it, it creates a pattern and, and it's not love and it but does not contribute well, to love. And also too, you know, you were mentioning the other well, for the women that are involved in actually doing the pornography, you know, the movies yes. and the things and the pictures, uh, it also leads to abortion. Mm -hmm. And that's a known fact. And, and these, these filmmakers of pornography, that's what they do. They, they, they know they'll lose their job shooting porn mm -hmm. unless they uh, have an abortion. So it's also abortion is tied in. Well, it would have to be. I mean, the whole contraception, right. abortion, and right. sex trafficking is, is, all is very it's big. All it's all together. together. But, but this, what I find so um, interesting about this is so many contemporary women are referring to this as a love story. Right. When, and just briefly describing the book, um, and I, I didn't read the book, I read about it, and I read some, some excerpts from it that were online uh, in preparation for the article, and it's, it's just, it's really, really graphic. 
but it is about a woman who graduates from college and she's very inexperienced, she's very young, she meets this multi-millionaire and he wines and dines her and takes her you know, to all these fancy places and buys her all, kind, all kinds of things and he actually is very much into um, sadomasochism and so this relationship, this very mm -hmm. violent relationship ensues mm -hmm. and the women you talk to who are reading this book are saying it's a love story. Well, she helps him, and she helps him mature. And I'm like, seriously? No. Since when did the women and from our age group, right, right in their <laughs> 50s and their 60s, mm -hmm. who grew up in, with women's lib, right. think that this was okay, that this is what a woman was supposed to be? Mm -hmm. Right. It's that, distor by her partner. it's that distorted, our image of love, right. um, of what sex is, what it signifies, and also who man is supposed to be for women. You know, we're not in adversarial mm. positions. We don't use each other. We are supposed to be in awe of each other, and we are, are supposed to be a blessing to each other. Right. And especially what the sexual act means, what God intended. Right. Um, this is a very a total cheap perversion version of it, yeah. of it yes. It, but I think it's important for us to understand how we are desensitized right. by this. And, and we took, a, took the opportunity to talk <laughs> to two young women. What this is doing to young women on college mm -hmm. campuses where they have so much access to the internet and, mm -hmm. and they're so influenced by the media. Uh, we spoke with two young women from the Focus Ministries, Fellowship right. of Catholic University Students, about what's happening with young women, why they may be turning to this, but also how it does desensitize one to sin, hence gray being the devil's favorite color. You know, we see it every time we turn on the TV, every time we flip on our computer. When we walk in the grocery store and we see all the magazines, everything is leaning us towards this. And what's worse is in my case, it was my own family. I had a family that was poorly catechized, that had a difficult time expressing to me what virginity was with a mom who grew up in the 70s and in the 60s that she had embraced everything that was woman that she had told me that i needed to have this and that is her poor catechesis and her poor formation of understanding what god is calling us to and when our own family is unable to support us the light mentions from the pulpit aren't enough it isn't enough when everything that is pointing at us is saying, this is what you need. It is when we have programs like this and we have work like Focus that starts to tell us this isn't what you're made for. You are made for more that we start to see the grace of God, that we start to see his plan for our life rather than the devil and the secular world. There, you know, there's a friend of mine and there were some Catholic women that she's in a mom play group with. And uh, these women um, were all, you know, she wrote an email to these women saying, you know, watch out for this book, Fifty Shades of Grey. It's really pornography in disguise, you know, watch out for it. And the women pushed back with, this is a beautiful love story. We are happy to be reading this book. You know, this is a great, you know, we're defending this, this book. And, you know, what I try to do is, you know, there's there's so much bombardment there we're constantly being bombarded even mothers you go to the grocery store and 50 shades of gray is on sale 50 percent off right there in front of you that's how it is um and so for me personally i i don't think twice i look past it but i know that there are women my age women um, with young children even you know in college that are reading this and this is just normal literature fair and so what i try to do is rather than a, even address it address something deeper you know what is it that's drawing them into this this book and where is this desire coming from why why do they need this and so if we can get to like the woman at the well you know she had a deep well a deep aching and so we want to talk what is that deep aching ladies like what you really desire is Jesus Christ and I will say God is my first husband you know, Zeke is my second husband, and, and really no one can fulfill me, not even my husband, the way God can. And so that place that we're trying to fill with these other things, you know, I, I try to not even address it. I try to d address the deeper longing and get to the deeper things with them. And that seems to help in, um, you know, making a possible turnaround. Uh, seeing people in true joy with our Christ, our, our Lord and our Savior to see there's this beautiful skit that we did at a retreat that you as the sins slip the chains onto the arms of the innocent 
and you start to see how, how that drinking becomes a chain. You start to see how the pornography becomes a chain. You understand how the seduction becomes a chain. And, and as they try to reach towards the Lord, how much harder we have made it for ourselves. How much more difficult it has begun, become, as we inundate ourselves with this culture. It absolutely weakens my moral compass, my guiding light. It, it weakens what I think is okay, what I think is acceptable, what I come to say is good for my life. It shatters everything when I choose to read, when I choose to watch, when I choose to surround myself with something that is already so overpowering, so seductive, and I let it in even more. Well, you know, uh, seeing what happens on college campuses, and also I think it's an awakening uh, for our viewers to say that I think very often people think the sin of pornography happens with just guys, guys right. looking at right. porn. Mm -hmm. But this is another form that it's, it's sucking women into. And uh, I remember in a previous season, we had another expert on to talk about this, and a lot of women too are on the internet in pornography relationships, like where they're, they're emailing back and forth on these sites where they get into a, a porno kind of relationship in their dialogue with people. Because for women, it isn't visual, and that's what this book plays out. Right, it's, it's, it's the it's, love, it's the romance, it's, it's, it's the, the romance, whining and the dining, that right. kind of and, thing. And right. think the, the illusion, fight, the, the fantasy. Illusion, and, and they don't even think of it as pornographic. That's, mm -hmm. that's the scary mm -hmm. part. You know, everyone just thinks it's pictures. So they think they can do these things, and they don't see it's having a harmful effect on them. I had a woman mm -hmm. actually write me when, it, when I had um, Susan Brinkman, who does a great job. Mm -hmm. she's, she's an expert in this topic, and she does a lot of writing. She works with Janet Begovic's Ministries, and, and she's She's a uh, award-winning Catholic journalist, and she did several interviews with me on my program about it. And after our interviews, one woman wrote me and said she was a pro-life activist, and she was pro-NFP, but she just th thought this book, and now there's a series of Fifty Shades of Grey books, were so just charming, and she sees no problem with it. I said, do you realize that by purchasing this series, you are so being counterproductive to what you're fighting for in yeah. terms of uh, against abortion, you know, all your pro-life activism, modesty. contraception, modesty. So everything right. you proclaim <clears throat> to be supporting out there is being mm -hmm. torn down. Is being torn down by these exactly. books. Exactly. I saw it all over Facebook too. Catholics that I knew were Catholic might have been, you know, indulging in it, and maybe just like the um, the um, guilty pleasure. And I'm thinking, my goodness, what kind of witness are we giving right. to each right. other? And I think that's why we have to continually be forming our mind because mm -hmm. the world will catechize us if we well, do not. Well, but that's what happened in this the, case. Exactly. But that's where that, that whole idea of, of gray comes from. Yes. Let's take a break and we come back. And, and this year what we're trying to do is give you some saints who are great examples for us and can strengthen our relationship with God. And we have two saints for this episode, and I think you're really going to enjoy them after the break as well. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Catholic View for Women. I'm Teresa Tamio along with my co-host Astrid Bene Gutierrez from Hispanics for Life and Janet Miranda from Priests for Life and Silent No More. And Janet, it's so important, and this actually was your idea to include this in, in the third season, right. having saints for every topic so we can ask for their intercession to help us with a particular issue. So who are our saints for this topic? Well, the first one is uh, St. Maria Goretti, and her feast day is uh, July the 6th, and she was born in 1890 uh, in a poor uh, family in Coronado, Italy. When her father died, she was only 10 years old, and she had to assist her mom in taking care of her brothers. Uh, in the town where she lived, she was pestered by the advances of a young neighbor, and she res resisted uh, this pestering. Mm -hmm. You know, he basically wanted to have rela relations with her, and he started threatening her, and finally he stabbed her to death, and, uh, ba but she maintained her virginity intact, and she was canonized in 1950, and she's a protector of young women, and also when people want to pray for the virtue of chastity, they yes. pray to St. Maria Gretti. And of course, Teresa, you and I went we to, were to her house. We right. went to the mm -hmm. house where she was in raised, where she, right. in Natuno, mm -hmm. where she was attacked, where she actually was attacked. marked. 
They have right. this place okay. marked. Mm -hmm. it, yes. It's like a, a little shrine there and beautiful flowers. And uh, we actually also went uh, to the church where, yes. where she is. And she's, she's often, um, her intercession is mm -hmm. often sought in, in, in people struggling with this issue because the, the young man that attacked her later confessed in the jail when he came around and, and came back to his faith and he was there um, in St. Peter's with her yes. mother for the canonization. He yes. said that it was um, the influence of pornography that, mm -hmm. that, led that, led part, that was partly responsible for his That's actions. Right. Absolutely. It led him to murder, in fact, you right. know, right. this young innocent woman. I read her story when I was a child and I was so inspired by her love of God and her martyrdom. I thought how amazing that she was willing to die for God, mm -hmm. you know, and, and instead of sinning. And so I was so inspired by her. I chose her as my confirmation saint oh, as well, Astrid Maria. Um, and she, also what I, what I also love about her story is the influence of her father, even though he passed away when she was 10, he was the person that taught her the love of God and also her dignity and worth. I think that was a big part of why she was so strong. So the, to encourage others to also understand the role of fathers in our lives, they're mm -hmm. so powerful uh, because in, when we're children, they're the image of God for us. And they also teach us about our worth being daughters of the, of the King. Now, a, a saint that would be for, let's say, women who are maybe our age would be St. Margaret of Cortona. That's right, and she's our, our other saint, St. Margaret of Cortona, and I have to get my light pad here. Um, her feast day is February the 22nd, and uh, she was born also into a poor uh, farm family at uh, Laviano, Italy, around 1274. She too lost one of her parents at a young age. She lost, uh, her mother died when she was seven, and her father later remarried, and she was mistreated by her stepmother. And uh, she, um, also um, is known for, for praying uh, for people who have uh, temptations. You know, that's, that's one of the things. Also, people who are falsely accused, mm -hmm. homeless people, people who have lost parents, people who are suffering with mental illness. But also, in addition, she's also someone to pray for, uh, for reformed prostitutes oh, to pray for her. Wow. Mm -hmm. And people who have sexual temptations, well, that's pornography, right? right? Sexual right. temptations. Also for single lay, lay women is also uh, people as a protector for people to pray for that. So uh, both of these saints, when mm -hmm. you think of it, uh, both uh, Maria Goretti and uh, Margaret of Cortona are very deeply tied into this topic. Right, yes. and, and St. Margaret of Cortona lived quite a, um, I mean, before she obviously turned her life around, she lived quite a, um, uh, how do you want to say, a sordid life in yes. terms right. of living with a man, getting pregnant out of wedlock. But yet she, she was able to turn her life around, and so there is redemption. We, right. we need to remember that, and um, there's always a chance to come back. But this is serious stuff, and, and I think what Katie said, how it's de there's this constant desensitization, this gray area, mm -hmm. because you're seeing more and more mainstreaming yes. in the culture, in the media, these programs that are promoting adultery, that are promoting constantly promoting sex outside of marriage, and right. portraying people who try to remain chaste as backward or out of touch with reality. So there's this constant, constant bombardment of telling us that gray is the devil, you know, gray is fine, doesn't matter, there's no black and white, there's no real sin, whatever makes you happy, that kind of well, thing. Well, look at how far down the road, like you were just saying, <clears throat> TV has gone. I mean, the, the programs that are on TV now, that, and even in the early afternoon hours, that young children could be flipping the down right. and watch. Yes. It, it's almost pornographic yeah. in, in the vocabulary and, and all the sexual innuendos the that are happening. And or the lack clothes thereof. Or lack yeah. thereof. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and you have to say to yourself, well, this is how we're going to keep going further and further down this road. Yeah. You know? Yes. Well, we have some good homework assignments. So, Janet, if you could go over that for us, that would be great. Well, first of all, as always, and I know in, in uh, your books you do this a lot, that people should be doing a, a media check. Media mm -hmm. reality mm -hmm. check. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Of their home. And of themselves. So first of all, how, how many, how much are you watching TV, and what are you watching? Uh, what about the computers in your home? Are they all in bedrooms with your kids with iPads and things where they can get on the internet and who knows watch mm -hmm. things that they shouldn't? So every home should do a media check. Also, too, there's a great website, uh, chastity.com which will give them uh, more information on, on how to follow the, the chase way and to and battle against uh, pornography. Of course, we'll have the quote from the catechism up there for them to refer to. And uh, all this will be on the CatholicViewForWomen.com, our web page. They'll just click on where it says episode, the, the title of our episode, Gray is the Favorite Color. From that, it will take you to all the homework and things we've quoted. And also my article. I have a link to the article. And Teresa's article, yeah. which is also mm -hmm. quite good. Yes. And I think what you have to do is don't be afraid to bring this discussion up. You know, say to someone, did you hear about that book? 
that's terrible. I hope no one I know is reading that book. You know, you really have to almost be an ambassador of this yes. message and out sh there. Share Teresa's uh, article. Uh, article. It's called the um, Grace the, the Devil's, Devil's Favorite, Favorite Color. Color. Any, like, anybody share who share it on who, Facebook. People yeah. will read it. It's a wonderful article. Very informative because we have to be proactive to right. counter uh, what's going on in the culture. Too bad we can't put an article in. Uh, you know, that's what we should do. Go into the book, print a bunch of your articles, Theresa. Go into a bookstore and fold it in half and stick it in all the books. So anyone yes. buying the book <laughs> exactly <laughs> has to read Theresa's article. This is bad for you. Because what you're saying, mm -hmm. you know, we just said, yes. women who wouldn't go down this road mm -hmm. are being led astray. Yes. I mean, it's and interesting when, when you would point when I would point out some of the people who wrote me after mm -hmm. Susan Brinkman and I discussed this on my show. When I sent back that catechism reference, this is a sin, and it's a big sin. Okay, it's a really big sin because we're talking about sex, and this is a big topic for the church. Not that sex is a sin, but in terms of the, the way this is the way distortion, it's distorted. Right. And then they wouldn't write me back, or they'd write me back and say, "Oh." <laughs> so anyway, some things to think about, and there is a reason that gray is a devil's favorite color because the devil does not want us to see things as black and white. He wants us to think everything is okay, so he can continue to lead us into sin. But we have the answer here, and that is the Catholic Church, and of course a relationship with Christ in the Catholic Church. So we hope you go to our website for all the details, and we hope that you really do a media check, excuse me, <clears throat> and take advantage of some of these resources. I'm Teresa Tamio, along with Astra Bennett Gutierrez and Janet Morana, and we hope to see you next time on The Catholic View for Women. Thanks for watching.